What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Jake Shavink here. And yes, we are continuing with our little mock draft week over here on the channel. Dropped a Packers one earlier this week. If you're Packers fans, go check that out. Colts fans, did not forget about you guys. We're going to do a mock draft 2.0 for you right now. A uh, little update uh, on what we think might happen uh, come at the end of April. Another trade back in here. That's a Ballard staple. So we got to do that. And probably a few senior bowl players because we know Ballard likes to do that as well. So Let's dive right in. Let's look at this mock draft. All right, so we get to start off at pick 21. This is almost a dream scenario, really, for, for Colts fans. I think a lot of them prefer getting an edge defender, an edge rusher, over an offensive tackle at 21. Sam Cosby's been the favorite uh, recently to be mocked there. But here, Quiddy Pay falls, and it is glorious for Colts fans. This dude certified Bendy on the edge. Great ankle flexion, good hips, good change of direction abilities, a fluid mover, going to be effective in stunts. Again, an explosive first step. He's got that bed. He's going to win around the arc for you quickly. Again, we talked about the change of direction skills. Got violent hands. He's going to be able to work speed to power, and he's going to be able to develop that. You know, he's going to have that inside move with those with that quickness. Has back, good backside pursuit in the run game. Really gets up to speed and really closes fast. And again, he flashes against the run. Obviously with that pop in his hands. Just needs to be more consistent in that area. And you'll get a real true three down uh, edge defender in pay. And that's that's really what the Colts need. Teray, Banigou just haven't been cutting it at this point in their careers. Got to get somebody to be a difference maker. Pay can be that. All right, pick 54. This may be a little more controversial. We'll see what Colts fans think of this one. But yeah, we're going Walker Little here, the tackle from Stanford. Again, I think you look at the injuries, obviously, in 2019, and then it chose to opt out in 2020. So we haven't seen much game foam from this guy in quite some time. Difference here is, I think, overall, from what we saw way back in 19, was better than a lot of the guys I think were available at this point in day two. Guys like Eichenberg, who I think has good good hands, but he's got that double punch. I think he's just a little lacking in the quickness area to mirror match rushers. Dylan Raiden still has some, some stuff to clean up in terms of pass protection. Even in the run game, really doesn't displace guys unless they're linebackers. So I'm going to go with Little here. Great footwork. He can mirror skills and pass pro. He's got really good mirror skills. Again, he's just able to recover well against rushers who try to work inside moves, work to outside. He's good at recovering. He's got strong hands, good awareness and pass protection, picks up stunts well. And I think he's a good mover in the run game too, really working to the second level. Uh, again, we talked about active, well-placed hands. He's smart. He's a technician out there. Obviously, the injury history is questionable. But here, the Colts get a guy who really, I think, potentially has the highest ceiling of all the guys we talked about really and mentioned there. On day two, just because of what we've seen from him previously, I know he's got to get back there, but he can't trot out Sam Tevy or Julian Davenport. You just can't do it. Walker Little can be that guy, and the Colts fans, they still get a good edge rusher this process, so I think this pick makes a ton of sense. Obviously, trading back is what we'd like to see, so we're going to do that right now. Uh, obviously, the Colts pick 54 to 127. It's a long wait, but let's move back here, get some more picks on day three, Potentially get some impact players. Trade pick 127 in a 2022 seventh. The Falcons were aggressive trying to come up in this one. Given 148, 182, and 183. That is a no-brainer here on day three. I just didn't like what was available either at 127 because of what we'll get to that for sure. But let's start with pick 148. Benjamin St. Juice, uh, the corner from Minnesota. This is a Ballard fit. If there ever is one in this draft class, a long arms, tall, lanky corner, great athlete, was a senior bowl guy. You know, obviously, it's, there you go. Meets Ballard's thresholds, size, good athlete for the position, had an absurd shuttle time. Again, he's patient in coverage. I think he's a good technique, really, in coverage. I think there's just little things to work on with him. Plays a receiver over ball, which isn't a big deal. Just got to work on timing. Good suddenness, transitioner, a good wrap-up tackler. I think it's just more keying on route concepts and keying in on, you know, fakes and working 
being a little bit more click close ability in, in zone coverage. Obviously, he's more of a press man type of player, but you're going to see in this defense, obviously, for Indy, there's going to be a lot more zone. Just needs to be able to trot, click close. If he works on that, obviously, he's got the athleticism to do so. Just refine the technique. I think he can be a really, really good player in this defense. So here we go. This is what the move back was about. Didn't really like the move tight ends that I saw at 127. So we move back here. Get Quentin Morris, tight end from Bowling Green. Another senior bowl guy, of course. Um, again, Ballard and Reich are looking for that move tight end. Quentin Morris didn't really show out really at the senior bowl, but on tape, good fluid mover at the tight end position. You can count on him as a receiving tight end. Good working horizontally, which is key in this offense. Obviously has some bursts, has some speed linearly uh, to work up the seam and be a seam buster over the middle of the field. But again, in a timing offense, maybe you want your tight end to win quickly over the middle of the field. Morris might be your guy in that area. And this could be the player that Ballard targets later in the draft if the value isn't there. Because the tight end class, I mean, there's a couple names at the top. If they don't go one one early, again, with that lack of third round pick, may not... May not be able to get one of those top guys. So get a guy like Morris, you can develop good effort as a blocker as well. You can develop him into becoming a future starter at the position with a team that uses a lot of double tight end sets. Got to beef up the offensive line a little bit more here. Obviously, Jack Anderson, good center guard versatility. I know, obviously, Ryan Kelly's there. Okay, we know that. But, you know, obviously can be an emergency center in case. Got to love that versatility on the interior. He's good power, good leg drive in the run game. Pretty good knee bender and pass pro. Good anchoring ability. Again, not, not a superb athlete on the move, but again, I think reliable enough to become a starter in the future, but to be a really good backup right away. We're not done adding juice on the edge. William Bradley King, another senior bowl guy, of course. Uh, just a high motor player. Excellent first step at times. I think he's good with his hands. He's active. Just needs to become more refined with his counters. And really having a plan as a pass rusher, but again, a high motor guy you can probably plug in on special teams right away, develop him into becoming a pass rusher. Maybe Bradley King and Pay are the duo going forward if Banigou and Teray don't work out. Obviously, got to add something to this wide receiver room. I think a lot of people are expecting the Colts to do that earlier. Here, just didn't get what we wanted from a trade back. So, obviously getting Pay and Little was, was important uh, early, so... Coming here with Des Fitzpatrick, who I think, you know, makes a lot of sense in this offense with the timing patterns over the middle of the field. Good separation quickness underneath. He can create that initial separation quickly. Does so on those short and intermediate routes. Again, good hands, good catch radius. That type of reliable possession receiver you could have on the outside. And gives, obviously, versatility with guys like Pittman, Campbell, and Hilton who can all play in the slot. And obviously, two of them can play on the perimeter. So Fitzpatrick gives you good depth at the position. And wrapping it up here, pick 248, Grant Stewart, the linebacker from Houston. Again, he's an instinctual high-effort player. Obviously, you know, Bobby Okariki, we're waiting on that. Obviously, Darius Leonard, that'll be the duo. But having a having more depth at the position, not a problem at all. Quick to diagnose action against the run. He's a good run-fit player. Pretty good agility uh, in, in coverage as well. I think he's really instinctual high football IQ player in, in all those areas. I think... Just needs to work on not over-pursuing early. He closes quickly, so he's going to overrun or underrun some plays sometimes when he tries to diagnose. But again, I think he's got good closing speed as well. So another guy that you can work on developing on day three. A lot of these guys, that's what it's going to take. So I think this overall is a good draft here. But again, you got to work with what you can work with. You know, they bring in Carson Wentz. Just got to get impact players where you can early and get some high upside developmental players late. So, hope you all Colts fans enjoyed this mock draft. Maybe if you did, drop a like, drop a subscribe. A lot of positional previews coming out for the draft for the Colts very soon. So be key on that. You got to subscribe. Maybe turn the bell on for notifications. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, a lot more draft content coming at you guys. Going to be a fun couple weeks before the draft. So get excited for that. I'll see you guys very soon. Farewell.